Welcome to Yep, Yeah, Yes with Marissa and Tamika. I am your co-host Tamika alongside my co-host Marissa, virtually distant during the increasing numbers of Zoom. Uh, I will say hello to her, but first, <laughs> I'm a little backwards anyway. How are you? <laughs> I'm like, whatever. But first, how are you? <laughs> That's what I was supposed to say, but first. Oh, no, no, no. I wanted to say, um, no, never mind. But first, I'll say that in a minute. But first, Marissa, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I like your earrings today. Thanks. Your headband. Oh, I got good taste for you. Oh, Look at you. Nice. Oh, I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Anyway, so today we're going to discuss whether pop culture is popular in 2020. Um, it's been a weird, 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 weird year. And Very. so the things that I think we projected that would be popular or things that would continue to be popular from 2019 into 2020 is pretty much thrown out the door in the words of um Tyrese throwing the towel tile because oh. he he he, he yeah. versus he meant to say throwing the towel and he said throwing the tile like it's autocorrect and so now everybody's like throwing the towel like throwing a damn <laughs> old damn floor you know <laughs> so, so towel. um but what what I wanted to do before we get into that I I did wanna I found this article on Pop, Pop Sugar um, from 2019. Okay, so Ooh. it was the end of 2019, and they were predicting <coughs> what would be popular in 2020. It's always nice to like take a look and see. Okay, they made hmm. a prediction. Like, all right, everybody made a prediction. <coughs> the balls drops like 2020. Barbara Walters, this is 2020, and then you know shit changed. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, share screen, and I'm gonna go to Google. So this is the, the, the pop sugar, sugar list, 2020 trends, the 20 trends that will define 2020. So they, they, they <laughs> get into the, the new A-list celebrity, um, they talked about the celebrities that kind of closed 2019, Billie Eilish, Little Nas X, um, who is this, uh, Lizzo, um, which I think for the most part, they're still, you know, quasi relevant today um and then you know they got they i wouldn't have called them a list though would you in 2019 would you have called uh, three of them a list a list like they just mm. give that name to anybody that's got a, like a hit or yeah no you know what terms are not what they used to be like a real like rock star is not like 70s 80s early 90s rock star a lister right. is not the same hollywood movie star is not the same so nothing's the same so we're we're talking in relative terms here right um but i just i just saw like two names that i have like i've never even heard of um you have uh ba -ba -ba, arlo parks and ricky heard. thompson never heard of emma chamberlain never heard of uh, oh, and Claude, a non-binary artist leading the change for LGBTQ questioning, or plus, sorry, community of uh, representation. <laughs> sorry, he said questioning. I'm like, but the well, Q is questioning. Are, you know, some are questioning though. Well, that's what the Q is, questioning. Oh, I thought it was queer. Oh, I'm, you know what? I could be wrong. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it, because some call themselves queer. Oh God. You have to have a, have a show on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We don't know. We're both conflict. We're at a line right here where we like. <laughs> I know there is questioning somewhere in there. Maybe that's the plus. I don't know. I thought the plus was like everybody else. Like they did just too many letters. We got to have a show on that because we need to, you know. We're so old that LGBT used to be TQ plus. It used to just be LGBT. It used, I'm so old. There was no T. Right. Yes, LGB. Yes, yes, yes. So the, I, don't know, the, I don't know, Claude. I'm unsure about the Q. 
and the plus is very <laughs> new. So. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Oh my gosh. We're so so yeah, old. I don't know. I don't know any of these people, and to to say that they're going to be a listers. Like I feel like a lister is somebody that everybody knows who they are. Your kids know who they are. I know who they are. My mom. Like I'm not there. like I'm not a, a country music fan. Right. But I know who Dolly Parton is. I think she's right. a national treasure. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Garth Brooks, Brooks and Dunn. Exactly. Sorry for the noise. Jolanda decides this is the time that she's gonna. I have to pee. I'm sorry. Do you not have to say it? Oh, yodel. Let everybody know. Let the whole Jeez. world know. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I don't All know the way out the bathroom. generation people. But I'm curious. So now, so let's let's keep looking at this article. I'm curious. Okay, so now. then they said embracing earthy neutrals. Um, let me see. Okay. If I can pull it without. So oh, neutral cool. tones and colors for clothing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's so, kind of been that's kind of been um the trend. People be wearing their pajamas and social distancing from home. Like, what are the colors? What are the no, 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 no. Remember, um, so you know how um, I know, I know we weren't gonna, we won't go talk about them. But Kim Kardashian came out with the whole line of nudes. But I think right. that started in twenty eighteen. Yeah, I don't so feel like it. Was the like nudes a, colors have have been out for a bit. Something in my which I love. My hair. Pretty good. Um, and everybody, yeah, everybody's been wearing pajamas. Yeah, so I mean, okay. we'll talk about nudes. So, okay, cool. Oh, sure. um, then we have Summer Olympics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> uh, the Generation Z Rock the Vote. Um, listen, Rock the Vote started back when I was a kid. Right. The thing uh, about it, too, like, if you listen to the election coverage any of it nobody's mm -hmm. talking about generation z showing up to the polls no it's all about you know white women the black yeah. vote the indigenous people i, yeah. I haven't really heard any people talking about in the hispanic gen vote z. um yeah i haven't heard anybody speaking about generation z 18 to 23 year olds i'm curious if that kind of got washed away or 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 overshadowed by the the boxing in of like Latinos and and um, the Black community, the Indigenous community, who came out real strong this year. Right. Which, good on you. Good on you, man. I'm good for that. That's good. Um, but I'm curious, as you know, I. It's so funny how like it's always like this up and coming generation swears that they're gonna be on and popping but they're like always two election cycles behind. Always. Hmm. But okay, so Gen Z yeah. rocks them mm. up. Then we got the yeah. plant-based meats go mainstream. I, 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 yeah. 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 That, yeah. that definitely made a, a big impact in 2020. So that was a pretty good prediction, especially yeah. with uh, all the people um, buying like DoorDash and- Yeah, and all the meat shortages too yeah. that happened during this quarantine. Right. And then remember, remember earlier in the year, it was like, wasn't there a chicken thing? Something with, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Where there was like processing plant. What was that? Yes. Um, uh, was it Listeria or Salmonella? Yeah. I forget which company it was. Cause I don't, um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there I, was an outbreak of something. Yeah. 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 Right. So oh, I'm going to leave my hair out. Cause my bun just, I don't have, I can't put it up. So it you is, can't put it in a bun. Yeah. So I th definitely think the plant-based meats went, you know, mainstream. And during the period of time in the summer, remember, I went vegan for a week. Yeah. Which was the most, not the most horrifying, but it was pretty horrifying. Was, wasn't a fan, not doing that again. Um, then we have the return of the it bag. The it okay. bag. So this is what the it bag looks like. It looks like, um, so imagine a pleather paper bag and you're rolling it over. There's no handle. There's no strap. Right. Ew. Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't feeling that. And not too many people have bags. I, I mean, I wear a hip, hip bag. Oh, not, I love a hip not bag. Not an it bag. I have a question for you, though. Have you noticed how, like, you know, the Hermes bags, like, with, with the trends on social media, like, 
have you noticed that that's kind of like have become the it bag of I want to say the decade maybe uh yeah I guess so but it's so funny so because I, 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 I saw that video that 50 cent posted you saw yes that? okay you went away for a second I saw the video 50, 50 cent posted with his with his girlfriend you saw that with the Marshalls yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, I'm the rich people like flaunting their shit this year or making fun of things yeah. that everyday people are buying I, I, I'm, I'm sick of it but but did you see homegirl was like I'm putting it in here it's not like I never rocked a a, a Marshall's bag this is hot and she put it in there yeah but then it was a nice like, I'm gonna put behind this bag yeah. so it's like she she fucked herself up by then belittling it at the end so I remember about like 20, gotta be like 21, 22 year old, 22 years ago, my mom got herself a, an Hermes bag. Mm -hmm. And this is before like, she put me onto Hermes, right? And before she was like, no, this bag, and she's like talking about it. And she got a little wasted one day and she was just like, who the fuck needs this kind of bag? And I think she either gave it away. I can't remember the story. She either threw it off the side of a mountain, gave it away, threw it in the ocean, something like that. Like she no longer had it. Right. And, and she was just like, no, I'm done with designers. Designers will never, like, I'm done. Like, I'll get it at Marshall's, so to speak. Like one of those things. Right. And I was thinking to myself the other day when like everybody's talking about these Hermes bags and then it's like, I know all these are fake and maybe they're not fake. But like, can you imagine like when you have a global pandemic with death tolls rising, um, probably one of the highest unemployment rates since I don't know when, the economy is getting worse and people are really talking about these ten, twelve thousand dollar bags and that's a minimum price. Just a minimum. Just that hmm. is bad. I'm, I'm like, whatever. So the it bag was supposed to be the trend in 2020. So then, <laughs> Um, from there, we have the, Marissa had to take a break, everybody, so uh, give her a minute. For those of you that see an empty blank screen, um, we went on to the, the now on, on tap, zero proof drinks. Um, I'm going to read what they wrote in this, this article. The latest trend in alcohol is actually, well, non-alcoholic. There's a zero proof drink movement afoot with more and more consumers cutting back on or ditching alcohol altogether. And it's not just expectant mothers and hangover prone imbibers either. Two thirds of millennials say they're trying to drink less booze with the top reason being overall, overall health and wellness according to Nielsen data. Trendy cocktail bars like New York's Getaway and ben, Fena's, Fina's Biz House in Maine are catering to this group's grown desire by shaking up creative mocktails that go far beyond just a gin and to tonic and hold a gin. The faux spirits market for at-home drinkers is growing by the day too. Brands like Two Roots Brewing Company, Free Wines, Kin Euphorics, and Ritual are releasing alcohol-free versions of popular beverages for those who crave the taste but not the headache. Well, cheers to that. Okay. I think it was a good cause, but because of the pandemic, I think more people just was like, fuck it, I'm getting alcohol. <laughs> so the zero proof went out the door with that um uh, go ahead what are you gonna say do you find that in this whole pandemic have you been drinking more or drinking less yeah. so much so that i ordered a, a, a case of, of wine and didn't realize it until it showed <laughs> up at the door <laughs> and it wasn't online, a problem to cancel, have i had to go online cancel the order because they want to send me it every month oh so yeah so there you go so merry christmas you're getting wine <laughs> um, <clears throat> then they got the throwback Thursday worthy hairstyles. Um, let, let, yeah, let's just skip over that because, like, yeah. you know, ponytails, whatever. Things, a living for live streaming workouts. I think this actually oh. was a trend that worked. Yes. Because, yep. but people, it un, un, unexpectedly, because people were home and, you know, doing mm -hmm. their workouts on, on Zoom and live and things like that. So, um, yeah, that kind of worked. And then lastly, um, the celebrity podcast explosion, which, which I think leads me to my next thing. 
um, which I wanted to kind of talk about stuff sharing. Yes, <clears throat> so popular in 2020, <coughs> um, I felt like one of the main things that came out of this whole what's popular and is popular was it is it popular is being popular in 2020 popular or something whatever the hell mm -hmm. it's called today right but I definitely the podcasts were just like I feel like they exploded and I looked online to see some of the ones that kind of stood out and I had the Ronan Farrow Catch and Kill podcast <sighs> um Julie Andrews uh Julie's library where she reads books which also um Dolly Parton I believe does on um Instagram. And we got the Jamel Hill and Van Lathan podcast where they break down the wire, every episode of the wire. So oh. like, I'm going to binge the wire and then listen to them talk about it. You can do that. Then we got the, the Ben Shapiro show, uh, Crime Junkie, which is one of my favorites that I listen to. And of course, the Yep, Yeah, Yes podcast. Thank you for watching. I mean. Um, <laughs> but so... Definitely podcasts were, were like a, a breakout kind of kind of thing. That's what all people talk about. Like, you know, just like podcast. You got Michelle Obama's got a podcast. Like all the, and it's like celebrities. Like regular people can't have shit. No. <laughs> oh, no, right. As you're reading this list, I'm like, how are you supposed to compete in this kind of market? No. It's like Rodan Farrow. Cannot have shit. No. It's, as much as you try, somebody's going to come. And now, and now all these TV shows have made their shows in the podcast. So if you missed yeah. like Don Lemon or Laura Ingraham or whatever, yep. don't worry. You know, go on iTunes uh, and download the podcast. Like they, everybody, it's annoying. But as I said, the best one would have to yeah, be the yes podcast. Holler. So definitely uh, the the podcast became a, a trending thing. What do, what do you think popular in, is and pop culture popular in 2020? I'm going to say, um, I've said this before. This uh, so <laughs> Every celebrity now has a makeup line, mm -hmm. athleisure line, right? Leisure line. Um, we, I, yeah. Everybody want to make sweats again. Um, <laughs> Make sweats great again. I was going to say the same thing. I was like, let me not do that, though. I was <laughs> going to say that. But everybody has, and, and a skincare line. I know. And there's like, and I don't know. Right, it's right, so funny. Oh, my gosh. What is going to be the new formula? Because I feel like that formula started with like, um, remember on Rockefeller, Bad Boy, they yeah. had a clothing line? Then they moved to fragrance, and then they moved, like, like, it was a formula that you followed. Now it's looking. And I feel like all these pseudo-celebrities are doing, they have an athleisure line, or like a subscription sort of like athleisure, or footwear line. They all have a fragrance, and then there's always a book. Oh, God. There's always <sighs> a book. Um, and now they have, like, the OnlyFans. I'm telling yeah. you, these celebrities, although I got to say, um, one of the things about what made me think about the, sh the, the title of the show, which I'm still not getting right. I keep saying different versions of it the whole time I'm here. But one of the things that stood out for me is that recognizing that there are some artists that are either going to continue to soar because the, the touring industry is down where a lot of them make their money or they're going to come yeah. up with something new. Right. You know, and so you're either going to be on that that new fence or you're going to fold. And so I, I knew some of the people that I, that I brought up and feel free to, <coughs> excuse me, jump in. So we have, we have here the, some okay. of the people that kind of, what they did is they took quarantine mm -hmm. and they flipped it into something else where they can continue to have a, impact on their fans, expand their brand, and possibly even create future wealth, depending on how they flip that. So we'll okay. start with Carmelo Anthony. He's not just a basketball player. He has a show every Monday called uh, What's in Your Glass, where him and the other person drink wine and they talk about whatever topic. Um, 
which is weird to me because Carmelo Anthony has always come across as like an introvert. So, which he probably is, which is probably so comforting where it's a one-on-one -on -one thing right. and it just so happens to be shared with the public. Right, exactly. And then yeah. we have, um, next to me, we have uh, Maria Shriver. Um, she has an Instagram show called Home Together where, you know, she's still somewhat of a journalist. I mean, I think she used to be on NBC, like one of their, like Dateline or one of, one of those primetime shows back in the day. And okay. so... Like, I respect people that are dealt a deck in life where you really don't, you could just be like a Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. But she could have just, yeah. You know, there's a lot of people like Paris Hilton could have just been like a socialite. Well, I mean, she is a socialite, but she did, well, she could just be sitting home, but she's flipping that and making money on her own. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's yes, yes, like, yes. You could be the type of yes. person that just, mm -hmm. yeah. Just, you know, or you could be Rob Kardashian, where your mother really does your socks, and you just chill. Does he still have the sock line? Yeah, he does. I think they're like online. Um. So I I respect I respect that about Maria Shriver because she has like kind of carved her own lane. Yeah. And a lot of people don't even really like. I think I think a lot of people know that she's a Kennedy, but she's not. But like that's not the first thing if you right that comes to mind right you maria think. shriver that happens to be a kennedy yeah. right right um then we got the verses which Ugh. floated created a space that's amazing right exactly um so that that was that was pretty putting pretty putting pretty these all generations can think about this because they've touched upon a few different like not only genres but generations um although um, I'm trying to remember who was it that's claiming that the verses doesn't really do good reggae or soca. Like they'll never touch the Beanie Man um, um, verses again. Um, that was like one of their top ones. It was, like it was one of their top ones, but they don't really delve into the reggae and soca music. So versus is more of like, you know, the hip hop R&B sort of um, market, not so much the soca and reggae that they'll never touch it again because it'll never be as popular. But not only that, it just, to get the artist to really commit to the, that versus, under the versus umbrella, um, they're claiming that they couldn't do, who said this? Well, you know what, you know what, uh, what bothers me immensely is that whenever a black person comes up with something, it's like, it's now they're like being pushed to expand beyond what their intention was. Yeah, it's like you can never just like you have you have a, a show. It's like, well, you know, you should have Justin Bieber on there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Or why don't yeah. you do a versus uh, 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 Justin Timberlake versus Usher? It's ain't about Justin Timberlake. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> I think like this, like whoever you were talking about, like they they have a point. Like the show is not really it's not like reggae. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it and it was it was good. I listened, I watched the whole thing and it was it's interesting. But that's not their format, right? Their format format is not to have reggaeton on there. Their format format's not really to have soca and dance hall and you know what I mean. It's just like hip hop and R and B, right? And if those artists have those kind of songs in their catalog, then cool, right? And I don't so, think it's really about even like I don't know that they're gonna have another like Gladys Knight and Patti LaBelle, like that oh. was the once in a, like Diana Ross ain't coming on there, you know, against whoever. Diana Ross is probably sitting somewhere like, who would I versus? It'd just have to be me. Yeah, exactly. She's like Diana <laughs> Ross versus the Supremes. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Then we got like Fat Joe, who I the put Fat him, Joe show. I, I, I watch his Instagram show, but the thing that I liked is that he flipped it. So now it's on TV every Tuesday night. Like they oh. put together clips from his show and they made it into a TV show. So to be able to flip that. And okay. LL Cool J, he has um, the Rock the Bells where it's like, he's basically um, like interviews fans. He rarely has celebrities on there. It's just people on there. They'll, they'll rap, they'll do poetry, they'll, inter you know, he'll talk to them, whatever. So I thought- Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I haven't heard of that one. And then we have Paul Fag. I don't know if his name Fag, Fag, 
not not a short i'm not sure how to say his name but you know it's it's people taking their their artistry from their acting directing filmmaking and putting it onto the instagram instagram stage where now it's like you're you've been to expose to a whole new audience of people that when it's time to get back into the regular mm -hmm. um, day of life right people are going to remember who you are also there was a couple of people like naomi campbell's doing it and um i mentioned earlier dolly parton so there there are people d nice obviously have turned it this whole thing into something different you know pop, one of the things pop, that i find 2020 the one of the things that i find so interesting about naomi campbell is that she's just been a like she's not much older than me but she's been such a staple for so long that I feel like she doesn't know how to like, like as you're watching, I find her interesting. I, I find her, when she speaks, I do listen. Right. Um, whether I think she's the smartest person in the room, who knows? The dumbest person in the room, who knows? But she's interesting. But what I find about her is that like, um, she's been, um, do I want to say icon, celebrity, superstar? I don't know what. And she's been in her genre for so long that it's like, she's just as a human she wouldn't be relatable to me like i couldn't sit at a table with her no and and have a chit chat like like remember yeah, when she had to know do... more about you as like a pet project yeah like, yes so well, what's it like like mm -hmm. being a mom and a wife with three kids on long island and having to like set your alarm right what's you that know? like what's that like going to a grocery store remember when she had to do um her community service at the um waste management place mm -hmm. and like it it became a fashion show and she, when she was she talked about it. it but when she when they asked her about it she, she was like i'm in fashion that's my life like i'm literally like she's been a supermodel <laughs> but she's been a supermodel since she was like an infant so it's like this bitch ain't wearing tj maxx no she's not wearing ann taylor loft <laughs> So, unless she's getting paid by Aunt and she wouldn't even bother uh, i don't she's know she's not going to the old navy outlet that ain't bad money no like some all money ain't good money but that's not bad money yeah 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 you know what I'm saying? when you're in but family. i say all that to say when she's got like you know like her best friend was giorgio like armani like like um um like versace like you know, like your mm -hmm. underwear is Versace, like for mm -hmm. love, like it's I crazy. get my shit in a pack. Like we're not on the same underwear game. But I think that the fact that there are no, the, 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 the reason why I brought her up and all these other people is because they are, they have been affected in a lot of ways by the shutdown, quote unquote. Yeah. So to be able to flip that so that you still have a connection with being popular in 2020, where you can right. make a list and people say, oh, check them out. Whereas there's other people, it's like, yeah, that was it. Like the, 2020 was their, way, was their last chance to kind of, you know, okay, let me step over. I'm, I'm here, 2020 is my year. And now there's no touring, there's no movies, there's like nothing. Do you want to know who, like, I think is the most gangster and uh, at like staying relevant for some reason? Who I think is like snarky, snide, and and I don't want to say mean, but like a curmudgeon, like a crotchety old woman, M a Martha Stewart. Yeah. Like she stays relevant. She has this show, like Martha at Home, and it's about quarantine, and she just happened to film herself. And like it's about like she talks about gardening and cooking <laughs> and taking care of certain things, and she's like, she's. But even like with her and Snoop Dogg, like how how did that work? And it works it was so beautiful. It's commercial, it's like yes. But the fact that she was able to flip jail, like how many people go to jail? Like are are is Felicity Huffman and what's it, Lori Loughlin? Are they going to be able to flip their jail stint? Lori Loughlin probably not, but Felicity Huffman I think ha might have a chance because she was just like I'm taking my lumps, let's go. And she was a good like, actress. She was actually good at her craft. Yeah. Like Laughlin, I was just like, people call her Aunt Becky. That's yeah. bad. Yeah. It's like if, if Sherman Hems Hemsley was still alive, 
he did other things, but it's George Jefferson. When you're so typecast to the yeah. point that people don't even call you. You're, yeah. So I, I agree with you. Felicity Huffman, she might show up in a, a random movie and be like, wow. Oh, look at her now. Good for her. Lori Loughlin. Loughlin, you're like, I'm not watching. Yeah. It's like, no go, go get your Massimo money. And all your all your Christmas and Hallmark movies. No, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, right. They wasn't mm. like you didn't think of her as like an, an actress or an actor, you know. So, actor. you know who else kind of flipped May twenty twenty her year popular year? Uh, Sarah Cooper. I saw an interview that she did, and she said the reason why her impersonations of Trump were so successful is because she didn't look like him she didn't put the wig and nobody wants oh. to hate him. but to he, see her act out his words that was different and it was like yeah like a cartoonish right. yes and yes so to flip that into a netflix special and it's got all these different celebrities on there or whatever <coughs> and all this from like the comfort of her her apartment in like new york city so it's like that's a gangster move right there i have to say like popular good on you the people that were able to kind of make 2020 like their year. Are you still there? Because you, your thing went out. Hello, can you hear me? Anyway, she'll be back for those of you that are watching and just see her name. And uh, uh, homie, you can't, I think this messed up. You, you signed on twice. Oh. I think our thing is going to cut down. Okay, there we go. Are you there? I'm here. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't mess up our um time. But anyway, <laughs> good, good, good. Um, sorry. Your camera switched around too. Like this? No, it's no. Keep it back to keep it the way you had it. Did you get a new camera? No, I had to switch from my tablet. It just oh, it cut down. Off. Cut off. Yeah. Okay. All right, oh. all good. Um, so then the other thing too was the, the uh, like people streaming and Netflix and yes. Hulu and Disney Plus and ESPN, um, like all of that stuff. It's kind yeah. of like people sat at home and watched the television. Those, I like how they released, I, I appreciate um, some of the music industry that released straight to streaming devices. Right. I will say, except for Mulan, that you had to pay the 30 bucks for it. That's the only one I'm not going to be thankful for. But I'm saying like all these places that did the whole like sh straight to TV, straight to on demand at a reasonable price. I like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely uh, a good thing. So all in all, I think pop culture in 2020 was still popular, but it came in a different form yeah that, that it's not none of the formats were were, diff, were new but what was popular um in 2019 may not have been really popular in 2020 and so it was, right. it was it's been it's been pretty cool to see what has risen and what has faltered and kind of go from there and you know so and I'm so curious now with this second wave, and I, I know a lockdown is coming again. Right. I wonder what's going to happen. Well, I mean, New York is, is shut down at 10 p.m. Friday. Like, now you got to rest yeah. everything closed at 10 p.m. Um, but I think it's going to be very difficult to do the kind of shutdown we had in March. Yeah. With complete shutdown of restaurants. Although, yeah. so one thing that boggles my mind is like these restaurants building outdoor restaurants outside. Like to me, it's even worse to be in a tent. With no air circulation. I know. Who the it's hell the is same saying thing. that? I don't know. And what? I love how like COVID doesn't attack you when you sit down to eat. It's, it's whatever. I mean, you and I have gone out to eat and it's been I, I I'll be honest. I get a little nervous, but at the same time, it's like we're outside. You try to be mindful, you know. Yeah. You know it is. It, but those damn wash your hands, hands, kids. Wash your hands, kids. Wash your hands and stay away from people. My brother was like, "Hey, you want to get lunch?" I said, "Who you been around other than 
your parents and your girlfriend. He ain't responded. And an airplane back and yeah. forth to someplace. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but yeah, exactly. To your no. motherland. To your motherland. To the motherlands. The motherland. Anyway, well, I, you mm -hmm. know, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of things that we can say that, you know, like I said, are popular in 2020. Um, things that would be nice to change. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, I think most people just sat back and appreciated art. Yeah. The form that came in. And, yeah. and took, the, took the time to appreciate the connectivity, even if it's through Zoom or with other people, whatever the case may be. Took the time to kind of appreciate that and, uh, you know, build from there. So 2021 will be interesting, definitely. What do you think? Um, I agree with you a, a million fold, but I'm very excited for what's coming next. I'm not excited. I'm just like, I'm ambivalent. You're never excited. I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah, I get excited about some things, I, you know, but for the most part, I'm just like, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird time, Holmes. It's a weird time. Oh, yes. But what are you going to do? Um, I do want to, uh, let me see something. So last week we started a new segment. Um, and it was your week where it was, uh, what is it? Marissa's musings. Yep. And so it, it, I think it would be only right that, you know, I join in and pray and we have Oh, see, you can't hear it because the stupid <laughs> thing is connected to my hearing aids. <laughs> Wait a second. So, so just to give everyone context, la context, Tamika wears hearing aids in both ears. She's got these dope new hearing aids that are Bluetooth. So her, whatever's happening on her devices are connected. So she's the only one that can hear it, much like Bluetooth speakers, right? So last week we were trying to figure out this audio thing and I kept inching, 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 inching close at her because I could hear it kind of like in her, in her hearing aid, but she could, she couldn't get grasp that like the world can't hear it, just her. And she why are you keep like, why, why are you inching closer? And I was just trying to hear. And she just tried to play an audio clip for you to get into the next segment, but she's the only one that could hear it. Yeah. So, so let's I try that, that again. Let's try that again. <laughs> Are you were you able to hear that? <laughs> yes. Okay. One more time. I thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yay. Okay. So Tamika's thoughts is my my segment. So those of you that know me know that for over the past five to ten years, I've embraced expressing my opinions, good or bad. Many times it's gotten me stern looks from family. Lip sucking, lip sucking from friends and glares from strangers, none of which have moved me to retreat. This is why I feel it's important to express my thoughts on the conclusion of the recent election. Back in September, I felt compelled to delete my, from my phone my social media accounts. All of the rhetoric was driving me mad. Realizing that family members and Facebook friends were either sexist, racist, xenophobic, homophobic, and just plain bigoted was eye-opening. Feeling empowered by 45 to speak their so-called truths only left me feeling depressed and hopeless. I'm not naive to think that every person I know has the same viewpoints as I do. Yep, yeah, yes. But damn, these mofos were posting, sharing, and liking some of the most hate-filled content available on the various social media sites. I couldn't take it anymore, so I took a break. Then Joey Flip. Joey Flip won, and now I'm back. And well, ready to leave again. This election cycle has been super draining and it's been exacerbated by social media. So what do I do? Delete the accounts of those who I allow to bring me down? Unfollow news sites? I don't know. But what I do know is that your girl definitely missed the shade room. And this has been Tamika Swartz. And on that note, Marissa, good week.
Good show. Where can they catch us? Yep, yeah, yes, 18 on Instagram and Twitter, the Yep, yeah, yes podcast on Facebook. On all your streaming devices, you can look for the Yep, yeah, yeah, with an H, the Yep, yeah, <laughs> yes podcast. <laughs> Why are you laughing so hard? <sighs> yep, yeah. yeah. The yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yes. I just watched this a horror movie on Hulu and it was about this woman who has that neurological disorder where um, like mouth noises mm -hmm. are, are grating to her and she has to wear these like um, uh, noise canceling headphones and it made me over enunciate all evening and all morning. That's annoying. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, it is. But I would like for everyone to like, subscribe, and download, and please tell all of your friends about the Yep, Yeah, Yes podcast. Holla. Hey. Catch <laughs> you next week. Bye.